In this video, I will be showing you how to use Zoom webinars with BuddyBoss Platform Pro. BuddyBoss Platform Pro already includes the ability for users to host meetings in Zoom. A meeting is an interactive live conversation, and we've now added support for webinars, which allows the host to stream content to attendees. In order to get this feature, you'll have to do a couple of things. You'll have to update BuddyBoss Platform Pro to the latest version and BuddyBoss Theme to the latest version. And you will also have to make sure that you've purchased Zoom webinars in your Zoom account, which I'll show in a moment. So here we are looking at Zoom pricing, and this is in US dollars. In order to add webinars, of course, you will need some basic Zoom plan. And then we can go to this Zoom video webinar tab and see that they are selling webinar access as an add-on. So this is an add-on to your existing Zoom plan. We can see that as of today, December 23rd, 2020, if you want to have 100 attendees per webinar, you need to purchase the $400 a year license, 500 attendees is $1,400 a year, and so on. And as a reminder of how BuddyBoss platform integrates with Zoom, if you're hosting a Zoom meeting or now a Zoom webinar within a Gutenberg block, that meeting or webinar is always going to be associated with the site owner's Zoom account. So that means if you want to host webinars through Gutenberg blocks, then you as the site owner will need to purchase one of these add-ons. Whereas within a social group, meetings and webinars are not tied to the site owner's account. Each social group has its own Zoom settings where the social group organizer is going to enter the credentials for their own Zoom account. So within any social group, if the organizer of that group wants to have webinars, they will need to purchase the Zoom add-on for their own Zoom account, which is connected to that social group. All right, with that out of the way, let's dive into the tutorial. I'll take you into the WordPress admin and we'll configure this. All right, so here we are in the WordPress admin. We go into BuddyBoss Integrations Zoom. And at this point, I'm assuming you've already successfully connected Zoom to your website and you've already purchased the webinar add-on. If you don't know how to connect Zoom to the website, we have another tutorial that goes end to end explaining all that. I suggest you watch that first and then return here. One really important note is that if you've connected Zoom to your website already, and then you go ahead and add the webinar add-on to your Zoom account afterwards, the webinar features may not start working in your website right away. So what I would do after adding webinars to your Zoom account is come back into your WordPress admin and come in here and resave the settings. That will force the Zoom API to reconnect here and update the options in here. As I mentioned before, we support Zoom in two areas of the platform, in Gutenberg blocks and in social groups. So we're going to start with Gutenberg blocks and then we'll loop back to social groups. So I'm going to go ahead and create a new WordPress page that's going to host our Zoom webinar Gutenberg block. All right, so I'll call this page Zoom webinar. And if I go in here to add a new block, when I go into BuddyBoss, you've had Zoom meeting from before and you'll now see a new block, Zoom webinar. So let's click to add our Zoom webinar block. And this block basically works the same as our Zoom meeting block. You can either create a new webinar or you can add an existing webinar from your Zoom account. So I'll go ahead and click create webinar and I'll just call this Buddy Boss webinar. And I'll schedule this for, let's say December 25th at 6 p.m. And I'll set recordings to the cloud and save the webinar. And let's publish it. And let's view the page and check it out. So again, this is very similar to the meeting block, except now it's for a webinar. So we can see the time and the countdown to when the webinar will be starting. And I can click on webinar details and see all the info, including the webinar link, the passcode, et cetera. And if I close this and look at the block settings, we can see we have some options to add a description for the webinar. We can add a passcode, change the duration. The default host is going to always be the host of your Zoom account. And we have some other options, including require registration, which I'll touch on in a moment. If we come back here and view the details, we can see this link is a public link. So theoretically, someone could share this outside of your website. If we come back to our plugin integrations, we can make that link private. So I'm going to go ahead and check that. And then we're going to refresh this page. And now when I click on the webinar details, you can see the link is private to my site. This means it's respecting the privacy of the site. So if I set the site to private network, nobody outside of the site is going to be able to join the webinar because the link they have requires you to be logged in. But there are some limitations to this feature, which I want to touch on. So here in the description, you can see we say that the webinar host will be sent out to Zoom while attendees will join from the browser. 
So that means when this webinar is about to start, all the attendees will click a button and they will join in the browser. However, if you're hosting the meeting, the button is gonna send you out to Zoom to host. That is just a limitation of Zoom. And then the other thing we write here, which is important to note, is that registering for webinars, as well as webinar polls, will not work while this option is enabled, as Zoom does not yet support these features in the browser. So if I come back here, and I mentioned this re require registration button, let me refresh and go to our block settings. And you'll see that require registration option has been removed. What this means is that if this is checked, you cannot have users register to the webinar through the website because it won't work because this is a limitation of Zoom SDK when Zoom is hosted within the browser. Same with the polls. If Zoom eventually fixes that, we will go ahead and support it. Until then, we're kind of stuck with that limitation from Zoom. All right, so that's showing Zoom webinars in Gutenberg blocks. Let's go ahead and show how it works in social groups. So here we are in a social group that already had Zoom connected to it. And we can see that we've now added this toggle to toggle between meetings and webinars. If this social group Zoom account did not have the webinar add-on, this toggle would not be there. You will want to communicate with your users that if they create a social group and connect it to a Zoom account, and then go back into Zoom later and activate webinars and come back to the group, this may not show right away. If that's the case, they should just go into manage and go into Zoom settings for their group and just resave the settings here. They might need to do that to resync it. It's just a limitation with Zoom API. Sometimes you have to do that. All right, so once they've done that, they should get meetings and webinars. Meetings will work the same as they've always worked. And now we can go into the webinars tab. And from here, we can see this pretty much works the same as meetings. I have upcoming webinars and past webinars, and I can go ahead and create a new webinar. So I'll just call this Mike's webinar. I'll just leave this stuff as is. We can also add notifications to users. This is a small feature we've added recently into both meetings and webinars that I can check to send some reminders sometime prior to the webinar or the meeting. So I'll say 15 minutes before. This is going to send a site notification for all the group members, an email notification to the group members, and also in the news feed of the group, it will post a notification 15 minutes prior to remind them about the webinar. We also have support for recurring webinars. And then here in webinar options, we have these options. And again, if I had disabled private webinar URLs, I'd get an additional option here to require registration. But that's currently not there due to the limitation of in-browser Zoom webinars. And then just like the meeting, I have myself as the host because my account is the one that's connected to this group. And by email, I can add additional webinar hosts. So let's go ahead and click create webinar. And just like that, we've created this webinar. And we can see that I set it up as recurring. And so we see all the recurrences coming in as well. All right, so I just waited a few minutes for us to get under 10 minutes. And now we've got the button allowing me to host the webinar. So as I mentioned, because I'm the host, it's still going to send me out to Zoom, even though the webinar link is private to the URL. So I'm gonna click that and it takes me out to Zoom to launch the webinar. And I'll pause for a moment and log in as one of the members of this group so you can see things from their perspective. All right, so I just switched to this user, Jessica. She's a member of this social group and we're looking at the same webinar. And so you can see for her, the button says join webinar in browser. And again, that's because of this option. So for all the members of the group, they have to join within the browser to maintain the privacy. If we uncheck this option, then they will be sent out to Zoom or they can join in the browser optionally. We're really excited to finally get the Zoom webinar feature out to you guys. I know you guys have been waiting for it. We've put a lot of work into making this happen. I hope you enjoy using it.